Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Word this morning. It's Tuesday, April 26th. Glad you could join me for our few minutes together and our ongoing conversation about our Daily Word and what it means for us and how it applies to our daily lives. So it is a rather cloudy morning this morning. Went to therapy early this morning. So I've chosen for our scripture for this morning um, this text, this one verse from Matthew, but this, of course, if you've read, if you look at Matthew chapter 6, this is part of a bigger text about seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Um, it's this bigger conversation about where God is and how God um, provides for us in our daily lives and how all of that works as we live our lives together. But this last verse is, verse 34, is an interesting verse for us that I thought would help us and that we might ponder just a bit. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So I don't know about you, but um, Diane and I, we live our lives by calendars. I'm not sure it's a great thing. I'm not sure it's the most helpful thing. It's hard to do many spontaneous things in life when you live your life by a calendar, but we certainly do. And I probably have said before, you know, every month I print out a calendar for Diane of all the things, have all the things on there. And so I have therapy appointments on there, other doctor's appointments, all the meetings that I have, the weddings, all the things that I do. And the calendar, you know, kind of, kind of guides my life, and it's about it's about planning, right? Because planning is a necessary part of life, and we plan, and we plot, and we dream, and we plan about all the things that that you know that we're going to do in life. We just we just do that. It's a natural part of who we are, whether it's healthy or unhealthy. I can't really say, but it certainly is you know, what we do with our lives together. But sometimes planning morphs into worrying without ever noticing how or why we're even worrying. And I think a lot of that has to do with perspective. Because I think a lot of the times that there's something within us that somehow believes that stressing about stuff then gives us the power to control it. We want to control our circumstances so that if we control them, they somehow work out. But God, the scripture reminds us, knows our every need. And God knows that stress and worry and fear and anxiety they don't change circumstances at all for us. So there's this reminder, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. And so we plan and we see the things on our calendars. And there's something deeply embedded in this scripture. If you look at the whole of it about asking, seeking and finding, trusting God to provide for our needs, that when we're people of faith, when we, when we trust who God is in our lives, that we don't necessarily worry needlessly about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will take care of itself. Tomorrow comes, right? We wake up the next day and it comes. We wake up the next day and it comes. Tomorrow takes care of itself. We have enough on our plate to allow so we can simply allow tomorrow to take care of itself. So it's important, you know, that we have a proper perspective about tomorrow. But the other part of the scripture that I think is vital to us is about choosing proper actions for today. We can't take action in the future. We can plan for the future. We can also stress and worry about the future. But Jesus tells us in this text to really focus on what we control. 
can control. And what we can control are the choices that we make today. So what, we can, what can we control? Well, we can control you know, how we treat each other. We can control our attitudes. We can control how we love our neighbors as ourselves. We can control what we eat and all the things that we're going to do in our lives, how we're going to, how we're going to drive. You know, um, if you're driving 47 here in Sydney, there at Tim Hortons and Wendy's and all that stretch by the hospital, what a disaster. And way back, way, way back, you can see the big arrows pointing to get over to the left. Of course, people don't, and they go rushing up there. And just this morning, um, when I left therapy, just this morning, coming back this way after getting something to eat, and, of course, people aren't getting over, and there's this big horn-blowing, you know, confrontation at that arrow. And it seems to me, um, that's a minor thing maybe, but but really Jesus admonishes us to focus on what we can control. And what we can control are the choices that we make today. We can trust our worry or we can trust in God. We can take actions for today, but not for tomorrow. Those choices are in front of us. We sometimes, I know, and I do too, you know, we sometimes act foolishly in the midst of making those choices. But when we act foolishly, it seems to me that it's then that we get stress and we get paralyzed and we're not sure what we do next. But the scripture reminds us that this life is really about self-awareness. It's about how we own what we have in our lives. Worrying about tomorrow won't negate the necessary choices that we have to make today. We can't avoid all the today's opportunities to steward love and grace and mercy and peace in each other's lives. We can't, we can't avoid stewarding the opportunities to make a difference in the world by worrying about tomorrow. It's a choice you know, that we make in our lives as we live them together. I know that it's hard. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. I know how hard that is, you know, as we think about what the future looks like for us. But Jesus reminds us that each day, today, Tuesday, April 26th, has enough trouble of its own. And the question for us as we live life on the plane, you know, as we as we live a daily walk kind of thing, the question for us really, I think, is what are we going to do today? How are we going to live today? How are we going to interact with each other today? How are we going to build each other up today? How are we going to love our neighbor as ourselves today? What good things are we going to do today? It's today. Jesus reminds us. And then tomorrow will come. It'll come without our stress and without our worry. It will just come. What are we going to do today? And I think if we would look at our lives in this more holistic kind of way, I don't know. Maybe it would help us. So here I am this morning. I get done with therapy. I go to the window and say, so Amber, I need to schedule more therapy. So we schedule out another couple of weeks, and I put it on my calendar, and it's another thing. And almost every time I go, this morning, Kim said, so, what's on your schedule today? And so I started going through, reiterating all these things, you know, and, and I caught myself um, in the midst of the conversation when I said, well, I've got, I've got a lot to do. You know, and I've got these baptisms coming up, and I need to plan for a couple of things. And, and uh, you know, I've got 40 bags of mulch <laughs> sitting outside my house. I'm home this morning, actually, for a while. i got 40 bags of mulch that need spread in my flower beds. I have a couple of trees I want to cut down. i got bushes I want to pull out. You know, I start stressing about all of that. Uh, will I get it done? I don't know. Um, how long will the bags of mulch lay there? I'm not sure. But Jesus says, today, do what you can do today. 
tomorrow will come and then we'll deal with what tomorrow. But often we forget what the previous verse says. Seek and you will find, ask what we given you, knock and the door will be opened to you. So I hope that's an okay word, a, a word that we could use today um, as we live our lives together. So um, enjoy the beauty of today. Know of God's love and grace that surrounds you. Know of my love for you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.